Hi everyone, what we're going to do today is look at layer masking. And layer masking has been a part of Photoshop professional versions for seemingly forever. Uh, it's just been added to Photoshop Elements, Elements beginning with version number 9. And I think you'll see it's a fantastic new feature um, that you'll use for quite a few things that, that you used to do before that were much more difficult. So let's get started. Essentially, a mask, if you think of a physical mask, uh, it's just like that. You're going to create stack layers one on top of another. And the top layer is like a mask that's going to let you see down below. You're going to create holes in that mask so you can see the layers below. That will make more sense as we get started. So let's do a couple of them here. Uh, here I'm going to start with these little slides on the clothes pins, and I want to take another image and add them into that slide. So I'm going to select the image that I want from down below here, and then what I want to do is select that entire image. So I can either go to select all here, or what's really nice is whether you're using a PC or a Mac, it will tell you what the shortcut is here beside it. And I find once you start using those shortcuts, it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. So here in a PC, it says Control A. I've selected the entire image. And now I'm going to go to the Move tool here. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to drag it down to the image below that I want to bring it onto. And as soon as it's actually ready here, I'll see a little plus sign telling me that it's ready to add to it. And now I can see the little plus sign. I can just let that go. And here it's added it into uh, my background. It's added another layer above the background layer. But you can see it's way too big. So what I want to do is just move it so that, and make sure that you have show bounding box checked on. If I turn it off, and then back on again, you'll see the difference. It's right in here. These little boxes in the corners allow me to just drag it in towards the center, and that will maintain the ratio of the length and the width if I'm dragging it in from the corners. And if I mouse to one of the corners and just hover over the corner, you can see it switches to that curved arrow. That means I can just click, and then that's going to allow me to rotate. And I can just adjust it roughly where I want it to be over top of this little slide. And once I have it roughly where I want it to be, I can either just double click or click on the check mark, and it's going to apply that transformation. OK, so now the transformation is applied. It's on top of the, sl the little slide, but it doesn't look natural because it looks like, well, and it is uh, actually on top of the clothes peg, where it should be in behind the clothes peg. So there's lots of different ways that I could move that. So I'm going to zoom in. So I'm gonna, again, the shortcut, I could look up on top and go view. Oh, the zoom in is Control plus the equal sign, or plus the plus sign. So I'm going to zoom in. I could just take my eraser and start, oops, I'm on the background layer, so I'll just undo that, change, make sure you're on the layer that you want to select from. I could just start erasing from that layer and the clothes pin starts showing up, but the problem here is, oops, if I go too far, you can see I start erasing parts that I don't want to erase, and when you're using the eraser, it's called destructive editing because it's actually taking those pixels away. And the only way I can bring them back is I have to undo. And then that means I have to redo the parts that I've already that I've already just done. A much better way to do it is to create a layer mask. So I go over to my layers palette, and beside create new layer is where beginning with elements nine, you have add a layer mask. So I'll select that, and you can see in that in this layer that I want to create the mask on, it's linked this masking layer right here. And right now, the mask is entirely white. So that's like a mask that has no holes in it whatsoever. And what it does is it automatically changes my color palettes to black and white over here. Because the essentially what you have to do is you need to paint in black holes anywhere that you want to see down to the layer below. So here, I've Got, I've got my, uh, I've selected black, I've got a paintbrush, 
I'm going to select a size and I want, I'm, going to, I'm going to want a fairly soft brush and I can just start painting in and in comes the, oh and I can see my opacity is down right now, I'm going to do that later, I'm going to move it up to 100% and I can start painting and I can see, oops, right away I was way too heavy here so all I have to do is just turn that back to white so my paintbrush is in white and now it takes away the, that part of the hole and away I go. So what I can do is I can easily just zoom in on that area and it's going to make it nice and easy for me to get it very precisely just the way I want it. I can make that brush smaller and it makes it so much easier for you than just deleting the pixels or erasing those pixels because you can bring back anything that you don't want anything that you erase by accident because it's called, like non-destructive editing there's st the pixels are still there so I could go ahead and I can start going down the side of my frame and I can bring back in the frame so that I just paint away and I'm going to continue on with that and then I'll just be right back and there you have it so I painted back in the frame from below and now it looks much more natural than it was before and it was pretty easy to do so there's all sorts of things that you can do with layer masks um, by playing with it so here what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do something a little bit different with it I'm gonna take this little boy and I wanna take this layer this background layer and create like a new background for that image that I just had so once again control A I'm gonna take the move tool I'm going to drag him down to the layer below and just like before I now have two layers my background layer and the new background layer that I've or what I want ultimately to look like a background layer stacked up above it and right now the properties of these two layers the way they're interacting is set to normal so what it means is I don't see anything I don't I can't see the layer below so even before I start to add my mask I'm going to change that to overlay and that will automatically allow me to, to see down through the top layer down to the layer below and if I want I can even change the opacity of that top layer lets me see a little less of it and a little bit more of the layer below play with that until I get it where I like it and I'm getting there but it's still very obvious that this this what I want to look like it's in the background is on top of this little boy so this is where I can bring in my layer mask. So once again, go down to the bottom of your layers palette, select layers ma layer mask. You can see it's entirely white right now. So go over to my colors, make sure it's black, because remember that's black or it's going to be the holes that I'm going to cut. Select my brush. In this case, I'm going to want a bigger brush. And start painting away. So now you can see and I'm just doing it very quickly very roughly oops you can see I just went way too far outside of there but that's that's the part that's so great about working with layer masks is I'm going to be able to paint that back any time I go too far it's going to be really easy for me to bring it back in so I'm just going to go very quickly very roughly right now you could obviously take some time zoom in on, on him and you know get the edges much much better than what I'm doing right now but just quickly I'm gonna go back to white you can see over here in the mask anywhere that's black that's where I'm seeing through down to the layer bef below and letting that little boy sort of pop up here is where you can see I went too far so I can just I went to white and I'm taking away the black now and that way I can't see below in that particular area there and I would just keep on playing with that until I got it just the way that I wanted it to be but you can see even just doing it very quickly it gives you the illusion that that this that this um, little boy is now in the foreground because we're seeing down below through to him another quick little one and again you can use your imagination there's all sorts of things you can do with layer masks what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go to my effects palette and I'm going to go to, into photo effects 
I'm going to take this old paper photo effect and just drop it on top of this bowl of fruit and what it's going to do is create another layer over here so I'm going to have in a second here I'll have a background layer that's in color and I'll have on top of that a copy of that layer that's in black and white. What this means now is if I can just create a layer mask on that background layer and I can just start painting in black creating that hole down below and now the apple is showing through in color because I've created you can see over here in the layer mask anywhere that is black is now showing through so down below it's this colored apple that's showing through and if I didn't like that I could just undo that or create another layer mask and what I'm going to do now is show you if I have my opacity set to 100% it lets me see 100% of the layer below but if I change that opacity down in this case to I'll put it to maybe 27% I'm going to reduce the size of my brush maybe a little bit bigger and still bigger and what I'm going to do now as I start to paint it's it's not letting me see all the way through it's giving me sort of that reduce opacity look down below some of it shows through some of it doesn't the more I paint in the same area the more that that shows through and I can just go through different parts of the fruit bowl here maybe doing some leaving others undone and you can quickly see I can create a whole different sort of look and feel to it where part of the color is showing through some of the colors stay in black and white and they're sort of blending together um, so you can and when you look over here into my mask you can see instead of being black it's grayish so anywhere where it's the lighter the gray color that means the less is showing through down below anywhere that it's white I'm not seeing down below anywhere it's black I see all the way through anywhere that it's gray different shades of gray means the lighter the gray the less I see below the darker the gray the more I see it down through below um, so that's layer masks in a nutshell lots and lots of things that you can do with it use your imagination and have fun with it